during the preaching time. Amen. Hello, good morning. How are you today? Are you all okay? Okay, of course, very obvious. My first time to be here on this uh, taller pulpit. Uh, we understand why it's designed like this. It's because of the man that uh, uh, we met last uh, week and who preached in our church. And uh, did you know, let me tell you a little secret. Behind the pulpit is a, a, a platform like this. So when your pastor preached last Wednesday in our church, he became more tall or taller. Okay? Anyway, uh, I would like to introduce first my 99% uh, family. <laughs> because uh, my firstborn is still coming tonight from Manila. And uh, I have two kids with me. The uh, second one, let me introduce Irene Pearl. Uh, that's the combination of my name and my wife's name, Irene Neo and Perla or Pearl. So Irene Pearl. Then I have the last child, Ivan Lester. And Irvin, if you're hearing me, uh, Irvin Lawrence is the firstborn son, okay? And of course, my wife, Perla. And uh, I should not just tell you that, I am also her husband. <laughs> to complete the equation, okay? And uh, be, uh, beside my wife is uh, Mrs. Genevieve De Vera, okay? The wife of missionary Joseph De Vera in Suong, who happens to be my uh, uh, niece. And beside Genevieve is Jasmine, her sister, okay? Also my uh, niece. Sometimes I call her Hasmin, and sometimes Jasmine, okay? Anyway, uh, it's our first time to be here, and uh, I know that this church is a church that uh, loves the Lord who learns the word of the Lord, Lord, uh, Lord and uh, who lives what the Bible says. I'm so happy to be here. Actually, our first uh, intention was to go to Vietnam because we were invited, to our missionary Dante Ilupre um, invited us to uh, be on their uh, 15th church anniversary on Sunday. But previous to that, actually, eight, nine will be a mission scan parents as well. And then uh, my wife is wiser. So he, she said, well, let's not go direct to Vietnam. Let us uh, go to Cambodia first and expose a little bit our children to the mission field. So that's a good, uh, that's a good uh, advice from my wife. In fact, she is my advisor. And uh, that's why we are here. So from here, we'll go to Divera's uh, uh, place, then Phnom Penh, then travel to Vietnam. And from Vietnam to Manila, and Manila to Iloilo. Who are from Iloilo here? One, two, three. Only three? Thirty of you? Okay, three. Very good. Sino po, or who among you is Ilocano? Wow, Ilocanos are everywhere. No doubt about that. Okay, very good. How about Cebuano? Bisaya ba? Bisaya. Wow! Da. Daghan. Daghan. Okay. And Tagalog? Tagalog. Tagalog. How about... Uh... Of course, very obvious, we have two foreigners here from South Africa, I believe. And USA, amen. And of course, this land from Cambodia. Downstairs, they might not like me. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> I, have a qu I, 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 have a, I have a story to tell a little bit because uh, this, uh, uh, of, uh, a few hours ago, arriving from uh, Manila to your beloved uh, place, 
at the airport, we were met by my nieces and, of course, Pastor Jong and uh, some of your men. And uh, we decided to uh, have a divided trip. The first batch went, al went home already, so to speak, and we, we were left behind. The reason we were left behind is because we, we were waiting for uh, Preacher Jong's uh, car to start. And it hasn't started. It hasn't started yet. And then they called for a backup vehicle. So the backup vehicle came over. Of course, a brother, uh, what, I forgot your name. I'm forgetful. Alex. Alex, Alex uh, Santos's uh, a car came over. And uh, we were so happy. <laughs> but then uh, a few minutes later, and um, some more minutes later, and some more minutes later, uh, Pearl and I were surprised. Huh? Where's the backup? Why is not moving? <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, Brother Ray came over and uh, with uh, perspiring eyebrows, <laughs> very apologetic, he told us, Oh, sorry, sorry, Pastor, we, the other vehicle is not also working. <laughs> backed up by the backup, okay? Brother uh, uh, Alex. So, uh, well. Uh, I told them, don't be pressured. Uh, I told them, don't be pressured. My wife blurted out, she said, you know, if I'm not saved and if I still believe in superstitions, <laughs> one vehicle not working, another vehicle not working, and her birthday is on the 13th, <laughs> January 13th. My birthday is on the 13th also. April 13, and so what do you expect of that for superstitious people? Two people with quote unquote malaises. <laughs> you know, malas English, what's malas in English? <laughs> Malays, ah, no, no. Bad luck, bad luck, okay? Oh, bad luck, a series of unfortunate events, so to speak. Anyway, I told uh, Brother Ray, Brother Ray, I have a story to tell a little bit. You know, in uh, going to a riot, a oh, couple of years back, we were Mount Arayat in Pampanga. Um, we were in a car, okay, another car. Uh, we were in a car, and for some reason, the car stopped in the middle of the road. Then, uh, you know, did I turn this on? Is it on? Okay. I said, uh, oh, it stopped. So Pearl and I and uh, an older lady with us at the back seat and two men on the front. Oh, we need to come out of the vehicle because we need to repair this uh, trouble, or to fix this uh, trouble. You know, the lady with us is a Catholic and uh, she believes in superstitions. You know, I told her, I just casually told her, maybe it's because uh, I was born in April 13 and my wife is born in uh, January 13. That was a couple of years back. And, uh, you know, she told us, I was also born on a 13th. My <laughs> <laughs> <I> goodness. <laughs> so, actually, if you are unsaved, you would already believe in bad luck. Okay? But yesterday wasn't the bad luck. It's a, uh, it's a part of life. And, uh, and being a part of life, negative or positive, we should learn how to deal with it. Amen? Amen. 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 We just uh, understandably, understandably came from uh, Manila and, uh, you know, people expect you to be tired. Yeah, and we are tired. And uh, I'm preaching, okay? I'm preaching. So wake me up when I get sleepy. <laughs> I am a, uh, I am, I am, sometimes I am like a drunkard. Okay? And sometimes I become like an anesthesiologist. Because I pe put people to sleep. <laughs> and sometimes I put my people to, uh, I, I put myself to sleep during uh, preaching. So please understand me. Amen? Amen. But I, I, I don't, give, I don't uh, issue uh, any apology. Um, I may be uh, uh, uneloquent in preaching, but 
no apologies when it comes to preaching the Word of God. Amen? Because the Word of God is that Word that we all need. And uh, let's all stand up and uh, open our Bibles in the book where uh, we study, uh, had a Bible reading. And uh, before I proceed, I would like to thank the Madlang Awa family, family circle, Pastor Joel, Richard Jong, and their respective families for accommodating us here. Actually, I told them, I'm going only to come and to uh, attend the service. But uh, they extended the invitation for me to preach. I did not force them to, uh, to make me preach. That's why it's a privilege for me to preach. Amen? Amen. Okay, so it's a privilege. And uh, may this be a blessing to all of us. Let's just read the first uh, verse. Titus chapter 2, verse 1. Are, I know that you are in your seats, but are you in this verse right now? Amen. Okay, verse 1, the Bible says, start. But speak thou the things which become sound doctrine. Father in heaven, we thank you for the privilege to be here this morning. I thank you, Lord, for Independent Baptist Church of Shimrip for uh, being here to uh, be a testimony, be a herald. Uh, be a messenger, be a, a great force, uh, a great church to, uh, to make a difference in the life of Cambodians and other nationalities who come here like us. And I pray, dear Lord, that you would uh, bless the uh, preaching of your word this uh, morning. And may the Holy Spirit have his way in our minds, in our heads, in our hearts. I pray also that you would bless Pastor Joel, where... He is preaching or ministering right now, and wife Maribel, bless them, Lord, as they serve you today. Bless also my home church. Please help them as of this moment to conduct the events of this day. I pray, Lord, that uh, you will be glorified in our midst. All in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Be seated, but if you would like to remain standing, no problem. <laughs> so we will be two, uh, two men standing, okay? So I would like to entitle this message uh, a four-point message, uh, only four-point message with 400 subpoints. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, pardon my English speaking, because sometimes I speak like Carabao English. <laughs> from sometimes from nothing. To there is. It's just that's a carabao English. From nothing to there is. Okay. Before I cannot speak English, but now I can speak English a little bit. Okay. So nothing to there is. The message is entitled since uh, the very first word or se second word in this passage, speak down sound doctrine. I would like to uh, um, entitle this right doctrine. Right meaning correct, true, right doctrine leads to right decisions. Right doctrine leads to right decisions, right? Improper doctrine or strange doctrine will lead to improper or wrong decisions. But um, sometimes I, looking at this church and looking at this uh, uh, beautiful uh, um, item here it's, it's a great reminder for us to be uh, sound to be scriptural to be biblical and that is what we need amen, amen. because we are living in a day and in an age where people even christians tend to disregard deny discredit the bible and thank god that uh, your church here in Shimrip is a church that is dedicated to proclaiming, not just proclaiming, not just preaching, but also teaching the Word of God with passion. Amen? So we can be changed and people around us will also be changed by the grace of God and by the power of God. Right decisions or right doctrine leads to right decisions. The first point, the first point is this. Sound doctrine must, must be taught in the church. Sound doctrine 
must be taught in the church. And I have here some references to back up uh, all the points here. We need to emphasize, okay? I, I know time is short for me to tell every detail of every point. We will run out of time. So, it's emphasizing and at the same, at the same time, summarizing, but not hypnotizing. Okay? All right. Sound doctrine. First, under sound doctrine, it's advantageous or advantageous. Very advantageous. So let's go to the book of First Timothy. We'll come back to uh, Titus chapter 2 a little bit. Let's look at the advantages of sound doctrine. It's found in First Timothy chapter 1 verse 10. Are you okay? All right. First Timothy chapter 1 verse 10. I know that uh, you have heard lots of preachings. I know that your pastor is a man who loves the word of God and who has taught you uh, uh, tire, uh, untiringly the word of God. And uh, sometimes I'm afraid to preach here because probably you know all the doctrines. You know all the teachings. You have heard everything. You have, uh, you have uh, how do you call this, uh, uh, look at those doctrines uh, detailedly and uh, you can defend every doctrine. And so I'm just here trying to, trying to confirm what you have heard. Amen? <laughs> to confirm, all right, not to contradict. Amen? <laughs> so to confirm that. It says in 1 Timothy chapter 1 and uh, verse 10, pardon me a little bit because I have a, uh, a difficulty in looking for the scripture references. Uh, I'm like a beginner in front of you. 1 Timothy 1.10, stick your fingers in 1 Timothy. Verse 10, the Bible says, For warmongers, for them that defile the, themselves with mankind, for men stealers, or shall I say kidnappers, for liars, for perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. You know, why is verse 10 mentioned? Because there's a verse 9 saying, Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and for sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers and or fathers of uh, murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for or because whoremongers, for them that defile. Okay, sound doctrine. The advantage of sound doctrine, first of all, is that it combats or fights. Lawlessness, lawlessness, disorder. We need sound doctrine to help us be restored to order. Amen? Amen? This word is already a corrupt word, but when we preach sound doctrine, it will help us a little bit. Or if we are true to it, lawlessness will be lessened in our surroundings, in our life. Amen? Amen? It combats lawlessness. Secondly, verse 16. Look at verse 16. In the same chapter, verse 16, the Bible says, is there a verse 16? Meron ba? Oh, meron. Yeah. I'm just testing you. <laughs> How be it, for this cause, I obtained, Paul said, mercy, that in me first, Jesus Christ, might show forth all long suffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to everlasting life. What is that? Actually, uh, actually uh, it says the second advantage here is that the sound doctrine not only combats um, lawlessness, but also it changes lives. It changes lives. Once upon a time, you and I were not like this. From nothing to, there is. <laughs> it changes lives because of sound doctrine. Amen? We have been taught the word of God. And I know we are still 
under construction. But there is already a change in our lives. Amen? That's good to know. Verse 19. Verse 19. The Bible says, the Bible says in verse 19, Holding faith and a good conscience which some having put away concerning faith have made shipwreck. Paul was warning or giving Timothy this instruction. Be careful. Be a, a sound, ma, uh, sound preacher, a teacher uh, with sound doctrine. Be, unlike, be not uh, like Hymenaeus and Alexander who have uh, wrecked themselves, their lives, because of uh, deviating from sound doctrine. So another advantage of a sound uh, doctrine is that not only it changes lives and combats lawlessness, uh, thank you, uh, it also cautions leaders. <laughs> cautions leaders. It gives warning to us. Amen? For I know and you know that there are also spiritual leaders who are deviating from the word of God. So with sound doctrine, let us be warned, let us be true to what we teach, let us be faithful in proclaiming it so that our lives will be great examples to those who follow us. Amen. And lastly, 1 Corinthians, oh, I'm sorry, 1 Timothy still chapter 4 at this time. 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 18. Paul, after talking about the, the rapture in verse 18, chapter uh, uh, 4, okay, chapter 4. Is there a chapter 4? No, 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 not that one. It says there in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. I'm looking at another. Okay. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 verse 18. The Bible says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Paul just talked about the coming uh, translation of the saints or popularly called rapture. He's talking to the saints. He's talking to us who are still alive. That we will not lose hope because one of these days Christ will come back for his own, for his saints who are alive and for those who are already dead saints. So let me just tell you that sound doctrine comforts living saints. Amen? Amen. Yes, it comforts us. The hope that is in Christ is the hope that is in us and that hope that is in us is even made uh, uh, more uh, uh, realized as the end comes nearer. We appreciate it because we are in a world that is distorted, a dirty world and everything that goes with it. Uh, 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 how do you call that? There is an expression that everything goes Now, everything goes what? Everything goes what? Huh? Everything goes fill in the blank. <laughs> so, dyan pa lang tayo. The advantage of sound doctrine. Secondly, the admonition of sound doctrine. We are admonished. Let's go back to First Timothy. Let's go to First Timothy, mga kauturan. I'm, I'm speaking in tongues in Ilonga. Uh, I still have a hangover. Uh, I recall this uh, 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 jet lag. Uh, and lastly, tok tok lag. Okay, so here, First Timothy four thirteen. 1 Timothy 4.13 Till I come, give attendance or give attention or uh, consider to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. That's it. Amen? Let's consider sound doctrine. Amen? Next. Next. 4.16 
Take heed unto thyself and unto the doctrine or teaching. Continue in them, for in doing this thou shalt what? Both save thyself. We know that the save here, it doesn't mean salvation from hell. It saves us from many errors. It saves us from unnecessary things in our lives. Amen? So let's consider sound doctrine. Let us be open to sound doctrine. Let us like be sponge. You know what sponge? That absorbs the water. It's just that our heart should not be just uh, not just, just be uh, our heart should not be hard it should be soft to receive sound doctrine let's consider uh, or continue sound doctrine and then first timothy 63 63 if any man teach otherwise or contrary and consent not to hold some words even or also the words of our Lord Jesus Christ and to the doctrine which is according to godliness. Not only we are to consider them, continue in them, but consent or agree to this doctrine. Anytime you disagree with sound doctrine, you are imperiling or you are putting your spiritual life in danger. And when you put your spiritual life in danger, of course, it affects the other aspects of your life. Physically, you will be affected. Mentally, you will be affected. Socially, you will be affected. Affected, you will be virused. You will be corrupted. And you will not function effectively and efficiently anymore. That is why the admonition is to consent or agree with sound doctrine. Amen? And lastly, 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, which is a popular or famous verse quoted by many, as many people as uh, they are, there are. And 2 Timothy 2.2, 2, Paul said to Timothy, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Commit them or transfer them. That's why we propagate sound doctrine. Sound doctrine is not meant to be just for us or with us. Amen. It should be shared. It should be taught. It should be preached. It should be proclaimed. It should be scattered everywhere. Amen. Those are the four things that we should do. Take heed of. We shall be admonished because sound doctrine is advantageous. Let me give this statement. The way we handle today's doctrines will have a major impact upon the spiritual stability of tomorrow's generation. Let me repeat. I repeat. You know that Timothy is a man of God. She is a man of God. I repeat. She is a man of God. No, no, no. I'm just, I was just reminded of uh, the, uh, the preacher who was very dogmatic and very bombastic. She is a man of God. I repeat. Okay. Anyway. <laughs> The way we handle today's teachings or doctrines will have a major impact upon the spiritual stability of tomorrow's generation. That is why it is important that young as they are, children should be taught the right word of God. So that when they grow up, they will be the ones who will herald the truth. Amen? Amen. And that is our role today. We can do less about what happened yesterday, but we can do much of what happens today and a little bit affect or affect the life of future generation. So let's plant the right seed. Amen? Secondly, so we have major point, number one, doctrine. We emphasize that. 
Number two, sound doctrine will penetrate. Go back to chapter two of Titus, please. Will penetrate different ages in church or society. Sound doctrine must penetrate different ages in the church or society. And under this point, under this point, we have different ages. Verse 1, it talks about, or verse 2, it talks about aged men, older people, older men. They are not exempted. Amen? You know what? You know what? Some people, especially the unsaved, they tell us that going to church is only for children and for older people, not for the young people. That's a wrong mindset. Aged men. You know what? Aged men should be the ones who will still uh, to, to have uh, over time in learning. Why? Because they are running out of time. They are nearing the twilight zone <laughs> in their spiritual life. Especially if that man was just saved at 80 years old. Oh, a lot of... The, Double timing to do. All right. Verse 3, it talks about aged women. Aged women. It's good that we have read the chapter a while ago. Thank you, the scripture leader, uh, reader, leader. Okay. Aged women. Then verse 4, it talks about the young women. And still, verse. Six, it says about young men. So they are not exempted. Amen? It's not just for kids and for older people, but also for younger women and young men. And then in uh, verse 4, it talks about children. Very obvious. Then in verse 9, it talks about servants or employees. Then in verse uh, 10, it talks about masters or employers. And, you know, actually I believe that the word of God is for everybody. It says in verse 11, verse 11 says, For... Or because the grace of God that bringeth or brings salvation hath appeared to all men. And when it says men in scriptures, actually it covers everyone. It covers all races. It covers all genders. So it's for everybody, the grace of God. And you know, the grace and truth came by Jesus Christ, the Bible says. And Jesus Christ is the Word. And the Word has appeared to all men by this amazing Savior we have. And it says, hath appeared to all. What does that tell us? What does that tell us? That this grace, okay, is available. It's amazing. It's because of grace we were saved. Amen? And still, it, we did not stop there. We are availing of the grace of God, not just for the saving grace that it gives us, but also for the strengthening grace that it gives us. Not only it's available and amazing, but this grace of God must penetrate every age. It admonishes us, this grace. Amen? This grace admonishes us so we will not be in disgrace. Let me repeat. This grace admonishes us so that we will not be in disgrace. You know what disgrace is? Yeah, I, you know, you know. I'm just trying to I'll play with you a little bit in your uh, mind, okay? Anyway, kumbaga sa Tagalog, 
Maraming napapariwara dahil sa pag iiwas sa tamang doktrina. In English, from nothing to there is. <laughs> Let us just say it. Many people have their lives endangered because of disregarding this grace of God. Many people's lives are in disgrace because they are out of this grace. That's the English term. Now, having said that, we have first doctrine. Then what does this doctrine do? It must penetrate different ages in the church or society. Point number three. Are you still there? I know you are physically there, but are you with me? In mind, spirit. Okay? It says here that for every age, this one, sound doctrine teaches proper, proper decorum, decorum for every age. Having mentioned about every age, let us now see what happens to its age? What do we mean by decorum? Decorum simply speaks of your conduct or behavior. Our way of uh, doing things, our, the way how we think, and that doctrine will teach us accordingly. It tells us in verse, uh, uh, verse 2 that the man of God must be what? Sober. It means serious minded. It did not say stop smiling. Okay? We have to be serious. We have to be sober. We have to be temperate or we have, have ourselves controlled. We need to be sound in faith and charity or love and in patience. I don't have the time to. Uh, put every explanation to every word of that. But the aged women, you are number one in the list that we need to be sober. Aged women must be what? Teachers of good things. You are the prime example of younger ladies. As we, as we see here in verse uh, 3, the, the aged women, likewise that they be in behavior, let, as become at holiness, not false accusers, not given too much wine, teachers of good things. By the way, when I read about wine and about women, you know, I did not tell you this very obviously because it's my first time to see you. When I was younger, it was not my father, but it was my mother who was the one drinking wine. My mother was a drunkard. Huh? Yes. I'm not ashamed to tell you that. Anyway, she's dead already. But thank God she's saved. Amen? Amen. But let me just tell you. She drinks wine. What does my ma father do? She holds cards. Or she, he, she? He. <laughs> he holds cards. Okay? He, I, I mean, he's a gambler. I love my parents. They are now both gone. And you know, my father, I was trying to, when he was still active, I was trying to witness to him. But he's very superstitious, you know. And uh, you know, the time has come that in his deathbed, I still tried to witness to him. And he said, ah, ah, I do not know if he is saying yes or maybe it's because of the pain that he was experiencing that time. Have you received the Lord Jesus Christ? <laughs> so I do not know. Only eternity will tell me if my father is saved. But that's uh, tragic, you know. Both parents, you know, I love them, but they have taught me something. My wife, uh, my wife, my mother, who, uh, who was... Uh, in submissive, in submissive because 
she doesn't want to obey my father, she taught me to be humble. Indirectly. My father indirectly taught me being a gambler, you know, he taught me to be honest. <laughs> Honesty and humility, we need that in our lives. Amen? And they did not go to Bible school to teach me that. By their life, they taught me how I wish they are alive today so I can speak orally to them and tell them, you know, these two virtues are what you taught me. I thank God for my parents. Behavior, behavior. Let us be virtuous. Aged women, young women must be lovers of husband and children. It says in verse 4, to be sober also, to love their husbands, to love their children. It says in Ephesians chapter 5 that women, wives should love their own husband, not the husband of another. <laughs> Amen? So it says here, to be sober, and then to be discreet, to, to, to be chaste, and to be, be keepers at home, good, obedient to, it's good, it's, it's confirming here. Uh, their own husbands, that the word of God be not blasphemed. Okay? Young men, next, likewise, exhort to be sober-minded in all things, showing thyself a pattern or an example of a model of good works in doctrine. That's why, who should lead? It's the man! It is the man who should lead. Amen? The ladies will follow! Sometimes I notice that my prayers, when, I, when, I, when my, I ask my wife to pray, she's praying my prayers. Why? Because she gets what, something from me. You know, this is a good uh, uh, admonition to us, young men. In all things, showing thyself. And then verse 8, sound speech that cannot be condemned, that he that is of the contrary part may be ashamed, having e no evil to say uh, of you. It means that we need to conduct ourselves in a way that the enemies, the, con the, the contradicting parties, will have nothing bad to say against us. What is our, uh, our uh, defense? The word of God. They cannot dispute the word of God. Maybe they can dispute your face, my face, but they cannot dispute the word of God. Amen? Maybe they do not like my face. But I should force them to like my face. Anyway, because uh, what the Bible says, every creature is created by God and you cannot contradict that. That's why I tell our people, there is no pangit person. Walang pangit na tao. Every one of us is created by God. And if you say somebody is pangit, you are insulting God. Okay, let me give you something. No pangit, no ugly creature, only unique people. In Tagalog, kakaiba ka. Wag mong sabihin, pangit ka. Wag. Amen? Kakaiba ka. Hindi, hindi, masaka, hindi, masak, hindi masakit, no? Hindi masakit. You are kakaiba. Unique. Instead of saying, you are ugly. No, you're unique. Amen? Amen? You're unique? Yeah. You haven't insulted God. You, all, you just, you, 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 all, you did not create an enemy out of your uh, friend. Amen? Yeah. Bakit napunta tayo dyan? Oh. Pattern of good works. Kung baga sa Tagalog, uliran sa mabubuting gawa. Amen. And then servants must be obedient, not answering back. And it says here, not purloining or dishonest. Cheater. Okay. There are many employees or employ yeah, employees like that, cheaters. 
And also, masters, to be fair. Back up by Colossians 4.1. Why? 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 Why do we need to conduct ourselves in a way that is pleasing to God first? Because the Word of God should not, of course, not to be blasphemed. In other words, the doctrine of God should become beautiful in the eyes of others. Not blasphemed should be beautified or beautiful in the eyes of others. Amen? Yes. And that leads us to our fourth point. So number one, sound doctrine must be taught in the church. Secondly, sound doctrine must penetrate the different ages. Sound doctrine teaches proper decorum. And finally, sound doctrine in believers will lead them to do their duties or obligations in this present world. Sound doctrine will lead us to do our duties in this present world. You agree? If you disagree, I forgive you. Verse 11, the grace of God. Of course, first of all, we got saved because of the grace of God. Then uh, finally, look at verses, let's look at verses 12, uh, 13, and of course, uh, uh, 15 and 14. What does sound doctrine in us do to us? L this is our duty. Number one, in verse 12, this sound doctrine, this grace tells us, teaches us or admonishes us that number one, denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should what? Number one, live soberly or seriously. Live soberly. Look at the word live. It's spelled L-I-V-E. Live. It is not L-E-A-V-E. -E. Get away from it. No. Live soberly. Let's be serious, as I have said a, a couple of minutes ago. Uh, should live soberly. What does that tell us? Live the ungodliness. Live the worldly lusts. According to 2 Timothy chapter 3, the world is not getting better every day. It's becoming worse by the minute, by the second, by the millisecond. The word should what? Be left behind when it comes to uh, living soberly. That means it tells us about self. Be serious as a believer. Amen? Be serious as a believer. It says righteously and godly. When we speak of righteously, our relationship with others. Do we cheat others? The Bible says in Proverbs, a false balance or timbangan is an abomination to the Lord. That's right? And in other aspects of our dealings with man. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God as you love your neighbor. Okay? We have to live soberly, righteously, it speaks about our relationship with others and godly. It speaks about our relationship with God. Then it says, after live, it says, leave. Leave. What does it say? Leave. It's not live. It's just leave. Get away. Ungodliness and worldly lust. Then continuing in verse 13, the Bible says, Looking for that blessed hope, the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let me just tell you, this verse, verse 13 and verse, uh, verse 10, these are great verses to tell people that Jesus is God Himself and the Savior Himself. Amen? He is not just one of those two things. He is both of those two things. Amen? Very strong proof of this uh, deity of the Lord Jesus Christ. It says, looking for that blessed hope. So, first of all, 
live soberly, righteously, uh, godly, then what else? What else? Leave. Leave ungodliness. Iwasan ang kabuktutan sa ating buhay. All right? Then look for the second coming. Our website should say www.jesus.com. Amen. Working while waiting for Jesus coming. Look for the second coming because that is our ultimate what? Ultimate uh, hope to take us away from this wicked world so that we can we be in heaven. The Bible says that Jesus said that where I am there ye may be also. And look at verse 14. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a peculiar, another word for peculiar, unique. Okay? You're peculiar. Okay? Alright. Zealous of good works or passionate in good works. So after what? After living, living, then looking for the second coming. In verse 14, we find that we must be zealous of good works. We must labor for God. Keep laboring for God while we are awaiting our translation into heaven. And finally, it says in verse 15, these things. What was mentioned from verse chapter 1. Okay. Remember that Titus here is a trainee. I call him Titus the trainee. And of course the trainer is the Apostle Paul. In verse uh, 5, chapter 1, For this cause left I thee in Crete that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting or lacking and ordain elders in every city as I had appointed thee. So how can Titus ordain somebody or restore something if he doesn't have sound doctrine in the first place? So it's good for us in verse 15, these things, what you have learned from the beginning of your salvation, speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. It brings us back to Timothy where it says that, where it says that, the all scriptures is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction in righteousness that the man of God may be perfect truly. What truly? Through these things, these four things, truly what? 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 Truly furnished. Amen? Equipped. That's why we are here. When we got saved, we did not stop. We continue. 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 Consent. Consider. <laughs> yeah. Amen? So, summarizing this by a little visual. May I have Yes sir, in white. Ikaw, wait, can I call you up front? Yeah, okay. I'm a shy boy actually. But uh, I learned not to be shy anymore. Picture this as a lost person. So as a lost person, you are on zero ground. So move away from here. Go down. Lost. Nothing spiritual about it. How about him? Then he got saved by the grace of God. Okay. Sino mas bogey sa iyo sa mga lalaki? Look around. Sino mas bogey? Huh? Okay, please come. Please come. Please come. Mas po. Inaamin mo ba? He got saved. 
in the person of this guy. So una, ligaw, lost. Ngayon ay ligtas, saved. Amen? Mukhang saved ba? Does he look like saved? Anong gusto mo? Mukhang tao o muk uh, mukhang, mukhang unggoy? P pili. Hindi, hindi. Mukhang tao o mukhang unggoy? Mukhang tao! Mukhang tao! Anong mali dyan? Unggoy siya, mukhang tao lang. Pero kung pinili mong mukhang unggoy, tao ka. Tao ka! Tao ka! Mukha ka lang unggoy. Pero tao ka. Anong gusto mo? Pangalawa. Test. Kamuntik ng mabuhay o kamuntik ng mamatay? Kamuntik ng... <laughs> kamuntik ng mamatay. You learned your lesson. Amen! That means you are alive, but you just look like you're dead. Okay? So again, the lost person, we were like this before. Right? Once upon a time... Once upon a time, we were lost. But by the amazing, the available, admonishing grace of God, we got saved in Tagalog. Ligtas! Hindi laban. Ligtas! We did not stop there. Si brother, sinong i-recommenda niyo? Sinong mas pogi sa'yo? Cedric. Ligtas! Ligtas! Lost! Ligtas! Pero hindi lang ligtas! Serving God! Lingkod! Lingkod! Pero in some provinces, lingkod means to sit down. But Christians are supposed to be serving, not sitting down. While waiting for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And let me have Brother uh, Alex here. Since you are taller and you, are, you, you look more handsome than the rest. Okay. You represent the person that you are not just laboring for God. Once upon a time you were lost. Then you, got, you were made alive, a living saint. Then you are laboring for God, and while you are laboring for God, you're looking for the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. That should be our life. Amen. That's the timeline of every believer. From loss to looking for the Lord's coming. Amen. Where am I? I am here. What am I doing? Looking at you. <laughs> I'm looking at you if you are performing what you need to do. That's why in verse 1, the Bible says, sound doctrine must be taught. And in verse 15, these things reprove, rebuke with all authority. We should not be ashamed. We should be confident. Why should we be confident? Why? Because we have the true teaching. And when we have the true teaching, we need to teach truth truthfully. Amen? I don't know if you allow people to come forward during invitation. Okay? Nagka-forward na kayo eh. Can you, can you, I don't know if you play music or, or no need to have music or whatever. As the Lord has spoken to you through the words that was mentioned, was preached, however the Holy Spirit led you, maybe He's talking to you about be more sensitive to the Holy Spirit's leading. Maybe you need to oh, serve God more. You need to be submissive. You need to be sensitive. All of those things. However, the Lord has spoken to you. Or maybe you have a problem in life that you need God to help you. You need God's wisdom. You need God's power. Or probably you are not yet saved. I do not know. You have not received the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. And you are still in this person's status. You are not yet saved. 
you will be better understand uh, the things that we are talking about when you already have the Spirit of God in you. That means you are saved. Receive Christ if not, if you are not yet saved. Father in heaven, please bless the invitation that is to follow. Thank you for the privilege to share your word this morning.